Hey everybody, I am so excited because I feel like I haven't filmed especially a makeup tutorial or makeup video in general in forever. We were out of town for a while and I got some vlog footage which should be going up soon. If it's already up, I will link that down below. Um, but that took up a ton of my time. Um, so I just was like, I need to edit this. I need to finish it before I move on to anything else. I finished it today. So I figured today would be a good day to jump in, film a bunch of videos and just sit down and play with some makeup. So today I wanted to do a little full face of nothing new drugstore edition. So you'll get to see a bunch of products that I've already been using that I love or products that I haven't used in a while that I wanna kinda of test out again. But it's all things that I've either used before or you've seen on my channel already. So it, these are the best videos because they're pretty just kinda of low key, pretty chill, but super fun to kinda of rediscover the things that you already have that you love. There's always so many new products coming out all the time. And to be honest, it can be very overwhelming. Um, I'm in a place right now now where I want to have the newest of new products all the time especially to review on my channel because that's what everyone wants to see these days but I can't just keep going out and buying a million foundations or a million bronzers or a million lipsticks every single day plus I know that that's not realistic for people at home so it's really fun and refreshing to kind of do these videos so hopefully it inspires you to look back at the makeup that you already have and kind of I don't know re-fall in love with it again so yeah I hope you enjoy it let's get started so I've already gone in with my moisturizer, my sunscreen, my serums for the day. So I'm just going to jump straight into foundation. I don't typically prime my skin, but if you want to, you totally can. We're using this Catrice Cosmetics HD Liquid Camouflage Foundation. I could not think of the word foundation because there's so many camouflage concealers right now. The e.l.f. Camo Concealer, the Catrice Liquid Camo Concealer. Oh wait, did I say camo? Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's been a while, okay? It's got a little dropper, but I'm just gonna put it onto the back of my hand because a little goes a long way with this. I haven't worn this in forever because the shade is a little bit dark for me. Um, it kind of oxidizes a little bit, so I have to take some down my neck. I don't know if you can see that, but this half of my face is done right here. I love this foundation. I feel like it gives you the most flawless looking skin. It's a little bit velvety matte, I would say, and it doesn't look like you have any product on your skin. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's so lightweight and it feels like nothing. It's wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna get just a little bit more. I did about like a pump and a half, I don't know, a dropper and a half. I'm just taking a little more to go kind of down my nose and chin. I always need a little bit of extra coverage right there. And then I'll take the rest just kind of down my neck a little bit to blend this color. Sometimes too, even if you have a perfect matching color foundation, it's almost good to take it down the neck just a little bit, a very light layer, just so that you have almost the same finish on your skin. If you're wearing a super like hydrating, dewy foundation and then you don't have any of that on your neck, you'll be able to see it even if the color is perfect just because the finish is different. So I always like... Well, first of all, I never feel like I have a color that matches perfectly, but I also like to take it down my neck just a little bit, no matter what, just so that the finish and everything looks very cohesive and blended. Okay, I decided we'd go ahead and stick with the Catrice family of products. We're gonna use their Liquid Camouflage Concealer, and I typically don't apply this much, but I kinda just feel like playing today, so. I will link my everyday makeup tips down below because I do use especially my complexion products a lot differently than a lot of people. So yes, typically this isn't my concealer technique, but I figured we're just playing around, so let's do it. And this sponge is the e.l.f. It's an e.l.f. sponge. I'll have to link it down below because they have a lot of different ones. But this is the softest sponge. It's crazy. I can even use it without wetting it, which is like very rare. I really like it. I feel like too. It's pretty large but at the same time I can kind of like squish it because it's so soft and really get right up under my eyes with it. This is looking so good! Oh so fun. So so fun. 
the other tool I like, I use a lot of brushes. I don't really use sponges too much anymore. I like this sponge with this concealer a lot. But another brush that I really like for concealer that I use most of the time is the Real Techniques setting brush. That's a really, really good one. I'm just going to take that Real Techniques setting brush to just set right under the eyes where I have the most heavy creases. And then on my eyelids a little bit as well. And I really like to kind of buff the powder in. I've been using this Cody Airspun powder a while since I got it. And... You know, I gotta be honest, I kind of miss my Maybelline Fit Me a little bit. But I have a lot, so I'm like gonna keep using it. Everything else looks good. I'm not gonna set anywhere else. I thought about setting my nose, but this combination of the Catrice foundation and concealer really covered my nose really well, which typically does not happen. So that's really exciting. I'm getting a little bit hot in this robe. I may need to go throw on a t-shirt. Oh my gosh. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Okay, so this is a pajama dress situation, but you know, it's really light and <laughs> I'm wearing it, whatever. I do have to go into work later, so I really like need to get dressed and put on my clothes, but I have been ruining so many clothes because I spill foundation and powder all over them. So I really just wanted to not wear anything nice while putting on my makeup today. So I don't ruin it. I have been loving this Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Foundation Stick in the shade Cocoa to do a little bit of cream contour. I feel like using a cream contour or cream bronzer looks extremely, extremely natural. It really mimics the shadows on your face or the pigmentation you might have around your forehead from the sun. It just gives you a really, really natural look. So I have absolutely been loving this. This is really the only one that I found from the drugstore that um, does it well. However, it may or may not be breaking me out. I do tend to break out typically just along my jawline and on my chin a little bit. But when I was using this very consistently, I started to break out along my contour lines. So I'm kind of trying it out again to see. because I really like the way that it looks, so I really hope it's not breaking me out. See, look at that. It's so natural and so subtle, but still so much impact you can get from this. I like to just pick it up straight onto my brush. I feel like I get an even application and a better blend that way. And then I'll sort of stamp it where I want it first to make sure that the co color gets evenly spread. And then once I've gotten that, I sort of will buff it at that point. You just want to be really gentle with this kind of a formula. You don't want to mess up any product underneath or anything like that. This blends out so easy. Look at my skin. Okay. <laughs> okay. It looks so good. I do kind of bring it even up towards the cheeks a little bit. I just feel like that looks really nice also. And then I'll take a little bit under my jawline too. Nothing crazy because I don't want to end up with like a line under there, you know? But I do like to do it a little bit because I like to slim down my jaw and chin especially. Just a tiny bit because I have a very um, large pointy chin. I called it a witch chin one time and people got mad at me so I'm not, not going to say that. For blush today, I keep going back to this one. I just can't help myself. This is the Essence Satin Touch Blush in Satin Love. This is like, I think it's like $3. And this just is so good. This has the perfect amount of pigment where it blends out easily, but it lasts all day. It's got a little bit of a sheen, but it's pretty matte. So I feel like that's a very universal kind of thing that a lot of people will enjoy. And this color in 20 Satin Love is just it's the perfect kind of you know natural flush at least for my skin tone and it matches pretty much every look you know if you wanted to do a really bold colorful eye look this would match if you were going in with a red lip this would look really good it pretty much looks good with everything so i just use this too much this blush doesn't wear off quickly, but blush in general wears off pretty quick, so I do have quite a bit on. I'll just kind of take a clean powder brush and swipe over, especially just this front part here. This is something affordable too that I used. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Um, I think I used it on this foundation too, if I remember right. 
I'll try to link this video down below. I did a bunch of drugstore first impressions. I think it was like a full face of new products. <laughs> so the complete opposite of this, if you want to see that. Uh, but this is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Loose Highlighting Powder. Mine is in I'm So Lit. This is the lightest shade. And when I tried this, I kind of felt like it was a little bit too dark still. So we're gonna try it again. This is extremely blinding, so not my everyday highlight. I usually like something a little bit more subtle. I will link my highlighting tips and tricks and favorite products video down below so you can see it because I love a very wearable looking highlight. I have some great ones that I love that are both powder, cream, that are from the drugstore that look very natural and not so metallic and shimmery and weird on the face. And this one's definitely very blinding. Let me show you. I'm just going to swatch some out of the cap here. Look at that, first of all. Ooh-wee! So, it's pretty bright. Just trying to decide how I want to apply it, because I have a lot of tools that I like for highlighting. I can't quite decide, because I don't want it to be too blinding. But since it's loose, I don't want it to get all over my face at the same time, because that can be a pain in the butt, too. I'm going to take this e.l.f. highlighting brush. It's very large, but it's still pretty, like, condensed with the bristles, so I'll still be able to kind of target where I want the highlight to be. Um, and I'm just going to get it onto the tip of the brush here, like so, and then make sure to tap off the extra. And then I'm sort of going to just swirl this onto the top of my cheekbones. I feel like that will look the most natural. Ooh I can already see it. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. Definitely as far as like YouTube and Instagram goes, people really prefer a blinding highlight because everyone has, you know, really bright lights so things aren't very noticeable. But when you're just in like natural daylight and you're living your life, I feel like highlights like that can get you know, pretty unnatural looking. This one is very bright. I feel like this technique though of swirling, of swirling it in with a big fluffy brush actually works really well because I don't feel like it looks too like shimmery and it's not really emphasizing my texture at all. So that's really good. Oh boy, oh boy. I just tried to layer it and it got, oh goodness, oh goodness, oh goodness. So it's definitely a little bit shimmery. Still not an everyday like something I would reach for because I don't want to look like a tin man, you know? It's just like, I wouldn't wear this every day. And there's a lot of highlighters that I feel that same way about. People recommend them all the time and I feel like they just look crazy, you know? And if that's what you're into, there's literally nothing wrong with that, okay? I want to make that clear. If you want to do that, go for it. I'm just telling you what I prefer and it's not that. <laughs> Okay, there's that. I think it's fun. I don't think I'd wear it every day. I might use it with a really, really tiny brush to like pinpoint just, you know, that highest point on my cheekbones or just right underneath the brow bone. But I wouldn't necessarily wear it like this, you know, just out on the town because I look shimmery. And this is natural light, just so you know. I just sit by a window. I don't have any lights or anything like that. So this is about what it looks like to me. In person. Okay, we need to move on. I've been talking about this for so long. What the heck? I'm gonna set my skin with the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I love this stuff and I'm back on it. I had the Flower Beauty Seal the Deal setting mist for a while, liked it, but then I got this again and it's just that. That aerosol can with the mister is just so good. I can't get over it, so I'm back on it. And then I always kind of fan off a little bit and then I will also take the back end of my sponge that is clean and just press everything in because I have little, you know, peach fuzz hairs on my face and I don't want the setting spray to just be caught in those. I like to really, you know, make sure that it's pressed into my skin and getting on all that powdery product and making sure that it sinks right in and looks very natural. Okay, I feel good about the skin for now. Let's move on to the eyes and then we can kind of reassess and make sure that everything's looking okay at the end. Setting spray makes such a difference though. I know I said I was gonna stop talking about this, but I feel like it gives your face an all over, less powdery makeup-y look. So then the highlighter looks like it fits a little bit more. So I like it, it looks good. For eyeshadow, I have raved about this in the past and I think that all of these palettes are so, so good. This is the e.l.f. 
rose gold nude palette. I think that these little 10 shadow palettes are so good. And well, I think it's 10 shadows. Yeah, 10 shadows and it's only $10. So $1 a shadow is amazing. This one's a little bit more purpley, some like rose goldy tones in it. Oh my gosh, I just, I love it. I think it's so good. The only thing that is hard about this one is there's not a super, super dark matte. This is the darkest matte shade that you have, which is pretty good for every day. But if you wanted to deepen it up and use some of these like darker shades, you don't really have a matte color to transition into that because there's not one dark enough. So that's the only thing to consider. But if you like these shades and you don't stray from like this area for the most part, then you should be good. Okay, I'm going to go right into this shade right here, this matte shade with a large fluffy brush and kind of set this down as a base in my high crease area so that any shades that we use on top will blend out nicely. You can definitely see the color, but it's not gonna do too, too much, because like I said, it's just going to be a transition shade. So it's just gonna be peeking through from underneath to make sure that all of our shades that are going to go on top of it are going to blend out nice and smooth. While we're here, I'm going to take that same shade under the eyes. I love smoking out my bottom shadow. If you've been following me for a while, you already know. If you're new, hey, I'm Darby. I like to smoke out my bottom shadow. I don't know if it's because I, you know, followed Jaclyn Hill for so long and she always smokes out her bottom shadow or if it's just my eye shape or whatever. I think it's kind of both, but I just think it looks so good. It makes your look look so completed and it makes your eyes stand out. Okay, then taking a larger pencil brush type thing, I'm going to take this deeper transition shade here, really pick up that product on the side, and I'm going to pack this onto the inner and outer corner. Another thing I like about these shades is they are very pigmented, but they also aren't so pigmented that you can't, you know, build it up slowly. Having pigment is a good thing. You don't want powdery shadows with no pigment at all, but also, you have so much that it becomes hard to blend out um, and you can't kind of slowly work your way into that pigment it can be really really difficult so i like that this you can layer it up and it gets deeper and deeper but you don't have to start off with like so much on your brush that it's you know overwhelming or difficult i'm gonna really just kind of press this on first that way i'm getting the most pigment where i want it and i'll actually switch back to my other brush to kind of buff out the edges here Taking a smaller pencil brush, I'm going to take that same shade and just run it all the way along the lower lash line because it's really not that deep. So I feel like running it all the way from inner to outer corner isn't going to look, you know, too crazy. I found that if I just like look up and hold my brush facing upward and just sort of wiggle it back and forth, I can really get a pretty good blend and get it right up close to my eyelash line. So that's usually what I do, even though it looks really crazy. Keeping with that smaller pencil brush, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a halo. You know how I feel about halos lately. It's pretty much every video that I've done lately has been a halo eye. I don't know what it is. It just, I don't know, I feel like it really opens the eye and draws attention to the center of the eye, which is really pretty. So I'm gonna take that same shade and just pack it onto the inner corner as well. This is another area where it's really good to just pack and press the pigment on before blending it out. Cause then you can make sure you open your eyes and make sure that you like where the pigment is before it gets too far in like towards the nose or too far up towards the brow because that can totally defeat the purpose of doing this you can make sure they're even and everything too and we'll go back in with that first brush with nothing on it and just buff out that inner corner okay now we're going to take this center kind of rose goldy shade here pack that all over the center of the lid these are insane you're gonna die watch stop Come on. I would spend $10 for this palette just for these shimmer shades right here. And then I'm using my other hand for my other eye just to make sure that the angles are the same of my application. This palette definitely does have some fallout, so be nice and careful when you're working with it. I love how this applies with my fingertip, but because I'm trying to really pinpoint that center of my lid area, I'm going to go in with just a really flat concealer kind of brush, take that same shade, and look how much picks up. Look at all of that. Maybe it would make sense to spray it a little too. I'm trying to keep this right in the center so that I don't mess up the edges that I've already blended. And then I'll kind of use this brush to define the upper crease. Okay, I'm just gonna flip the brush over and use the clean side and then pick up this, why am I so awkward? I'm gonna use this lighter shade in the palette right here 
to really, really, really hit the very center of my eye. Can you just see how much light that brought to that area? It just gives it a little extra special something. Okay, I feel really bad. I wasn't gonna do this, but I'm doing it now. I really, really wanna deepen this up a little bit because as beautiful as it is, it's really hard to see the definition of the halo eye. It almost just looks like I applied some glitter, but I didn't get it all over my whole lid. Do you know what I mean? Just because there's not that depth there. So I'm gonna go into the BH Opalescent Palette, also something I've used before and love with all my heart. So I will link this video down below where I'm trying this out. I've used it in a bunch of other videos as well. So if you haven't seen those, Check out any of my other videos and this will probably make a small appearance. <laughs> and I'm just gonna take another clean pencil brush and I'm going to go into this really nice kind of bright purple. I'm gonna pack this onto the inner and outer corners just to kind of deepen it up a little bit more, I'm hoping. Yeah, I think this will do it. This isn't the look I was going for originally, but here we are. I just really want a little more depth, you know? I feel like this will make everything stand out a little better. Just continuing to slowly kind of pack and layer this on. Sorry for dipping into multiple palettes. I hope that that's not like a big deal to anybody because I really didn't want to. Once I decided to do this halo eye, I was sort of like, okay, well, I need it because I need that, you know, depth. So, whoops. Buffing out the edges one last time and then deepening up those center colors one more time as well. Okay, I have just a little bit of like glitter on my face because I've been wearing that up like a mad woman. I do feel like you can see it a, like a little bit right there, like the glitter. But I'll go over it with some powder and hopefully that will help. I'm just gonna take a flat definer brush and go into that purple and smudge this from inner to outer corner on the lower lash line. Okay, then I'm gonna use that loose highlight from before to highlight my inner corner. Trying to decide if I should do an eyeliner or not. Wow, why haven't I been using this in my inner corner? Okay, I'm not exactly sure where that left off because I had to give my little camera a break. I threw on a little bit of mascara. I just used the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara, which is phenomenal, but I'm gonna put on lashes so I didn't like spend a lot of time worrying about that. And I also filled in my brows. Um, I used the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer. It's just a little micro brow pencil and I love it. That's nothing new as well, so there's that. And then the lashes I'm going to throw on are these House of Lashes Iconic Lights. I must have put those in upside down. Yeah, whoops. Um, these are great because they are very noticeable. I wouldn't say they're like super natural wearable every day, but like if you want a little something extra and it's still daytime, then these are really good. So I'm planning on talking about this in another video, which this doesn't seem like a big deal because a lot of people have a ton of subscribers, but I don't know if you noticed, I have 100 subscribers and I'm super excited about it. So thank you if you've subscribed. This is insane. I am very happy to have so many like friends on here. I really do like talk to you guys all the time and I feel like we have like a close friendship. And so it's just really, it's a fun, it's a fun time. I'm really grateful for that. And so thank you for following me if you do. Um, it means a whole, whole lot to me. Let me know if there's things you want to see from me too. Especially if you subscribe, I would love to hear, you know, the things that you want to see from me. See if those stick because I had a struggle just putting that on. I'm going to put on a little Essence Make Me Brow Brow Gel. Um, this is similar to the Gimme Brow from Benefit that everyone loves. It's got the fibers in it. It's um, got color to it too, so it's going to help kind of give your brows a little bit of thickness while holding them in place. I do find though with this one that I like to do like two coats, even though it gives you that fiber and hold and volume and all that. You know, it's, it's not the greatest ever, so you need a little, little extra, but it's only like $4 I think, so I think it's worth it. Okay, we're almost done and I'm just taking a nice close look at it, my skin and it looks really good. I'm actually surprised how good the highlighter looks after putting on that setting spray. I really, really like it. I'm going to powder just under my eyes a little bit. I have this Physicians Formula The Healthy Powder. I've used this before. Of course, full face of nothing new. You already know that. But um, I took it on my trip and it broke into about a bajillion pieces. And it's pretty much brand new and I don't really want to buy another one. So I've kind of been using it a little bit. What I'll do is just like really softly just tap in 
and then just with it on the table so I don't make a mess, I just kind of like kick off the excess. And then I'm just going to kind of sweep that just under the eye a little bit, just really lightly. And I feel like this powder makes a huge difference at really smoothing the skin, giving a little bit of extra coverage as well. It's one of those things that's like subtle but big at the same time. Did the jawline and then a little bit just like kind of along the smile lines. And we'll just do the forehead too while we're at it, just right in here. I don't know if you can see how much that smoothed everything out. So there's that. And everything looks really good. The concealer and foundation together really, really covered my nose area very well, which I know I struggle with and a lot of people struggle with that as well. Just like foundation not really sticking to your nose, but this covered it really well. Um, the foundation's not really settling into my lines up here, which most foundations on me do. I'm really happy with it. Let me get in close so you can see. Look at that. Oh. Let's just throw on a little lip and then we'll be all done. This is a Maybelline lipstick. The color is new, okay? I have to admit. I have not used this color before. Um, I've swatched it and I love it, but I've used this formula before and I love all of the Maybelline lipsticks. So I figured it counts, right? Because I can totally recommend those already. This is just a different color. This is in the shade 920 Nude Lust. So there's what that looks like. It's just a really nice nude. I feel like um, it's a little bit neutral, not too brown, not too pink, not too peach, just kind of in the middle. Um, it's light enough, but not like stark, stark white. So I want to give this a shot with this look. This is a good color. Wow. That's pretty. I love this color. If you're a fair skin tone and you want a nude that will kind of go with everything, warm tones, cool tones, neutral looks, this is the one for you. Just for fun, I'm going to top it off with my Tarte Sugar Rush Lip Oil. I don't know the full name, but it's in the shade Fresh Pressed. Um, I'll link this down below so you can find it. It is amazing and it smells so good. Mm. I talked about this in a recent favorites too, so if you're interested in more about this, I'll link that down below. That's so this is the nude I've been looking for, like honestly. Sorry, I'm staring at the monitor because I just want to like see what you guys are seeing a little bit. But wow, this is so stunning. I'm very excited about the nude. But everything else, I'm very happy with. I'm just really excited about YouTube in general and makeup right now. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you did like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that we can stay friends and you can keep watching all the content that I am going to put out. And like I said, I'm very active in the comments section. Um, so if you have anything you want to tell me, ask me, show me whatever, let me know and I would love to hear from you guys and respond back. Um, like I said, I feel like we really are just friends and so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time. Bye!